my dear brothers and sisters the title of the message today is the is new living way new living way okay hebrews chapter 10 verse 20 says hebrews it was written by someone in the early church okay some of the scholars say that it is saint paul some of them do not agree with that but it's all god god's word by a new and living way which he which jesus inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh okay now this author of hebrews is talking about a new and living way and he's talking about this way okay this pathway was inaugurated by someone like uh, the chief minister or the premier goes and inaugurates a new tunnel or a new pathway roadways Huh? M7, M, like that. Huh? Okay, uh, the person in authority goes and inaugurates, and from that minute onwards, it is in high usage by the public. Thousands of people travel through them. They use that facility, right? Hmm? Likewise, Jesus inaugurated a new and living way for us through the veil. Tirachilai Muli Waga, Kartar in the Karite, inaugurate ribbon cut panna. Okay? And the author says the veil is his flesh. Hallelujah. So through his body, he suffered on the cross of Calvary. And he inaugurated a new and living way through which we, you and I are traveling today. Do you understand? So the veil is compared to the flesh of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ. So Christ died once for all, one death. Covering the whole of humanity. Think about it. One person dying for the whole humanity. For thousands of years, if there is humanity going to exist, for all of them, one man, Jesus Christ, died. Once for all death. Has allowed us to take, have a perfect standing with God. So through this new and living way, you are in perfect line with the Father God. Do you understand? That is the beauty of this pathway. Through other ways, okay, which might be broader than this, okay, that, that pathway might give you options to choose. For money, you will have a God. For studies, you will have a God. Huh? For other, every specialist will, will be available. But this new and living way is one and only new way, living way, and it's a narrow path. It's not easy. It's not always easy to be a Christian. Am I right? Yeah? There are challenges. But the broad way leads to eternal damnation. You will have specials there. You will have all type of lust expressed through their own pagan gods and goddesses. Do you understand? The lust of man from the beginning of fall, he has developed lusts for money, greed, Hatred, jealousy, sexual lust and all these things are expressed through their own pagan gods and goddesses. You need not search for their doctrines. Look at the pagan gods and goddesses. From 3000 BC, 4000 BC till date, they express lust. They express bloodshed. Huh? Okay, pagan gods. Greek. Huh? In those days, Greek and uh, those uh, uh, Assyrians and all those people, they also had the same romance. They will have a God. Romance. Huh? Man and woman, lust. The, all these things are there embedded in that pagan system. So, that en enti entices those people. Do you understand? Entices those people. And they become corrupt. But Jesus opened a new and living way. A holy way. So through this holy way, a person who enters this holy way that Jesus inaugurated, has inaugurated, he comes to God with boldness in heart. Boldness. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All these days you are creeping like an animal. When it comes to God, you will immediately become like a slave. Yes, even now we are bond servants. Paul calls himself as a bond servant. A slave who has no authority, no, no case for himself. But we 
voluntarily take that position, not because God is calling you as a bond servant. You understand? So, but with, when, you, when you take this new way, you receive boldness. And what, what do you mean by boldness? Freedom of speech. Hmm? Boldness. You can talk to God like a friend. Even in the Old Testament, okay, this God allowed Moses, a stutterer, to have an argument with him. This is the type of God from the Old Testament. From the Old he's God is calling him particularly for the purpose of delivering Israelites. But this man is saying, no, 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 find someone else. There are better people. I am not the one. I am not ready. I am not fit enough. Do you understand? And God became angry. The argument went to the extent of a real challenge between two people. So, in the presence of God, this God that you and I worship, from the Old Testament, they felt some boldness in heart. That I had, I can have a conversation. You remember Abraham pleaded for the Sodom and Gomorrah, the dirtiest sinners of that time. Sodom, even now that has become a very bad word, right? But Abraham interceded for such dirty sinners. While Christians, we, we start immediately cursing such people, right? Huh? But Abraham in the Old Testament, a friend of God, pleaded, was pleading for such people. And, G, and God of that time, who, who, uh, who came to Abraham, allowed that discussion, that intercession. 50 people, 40 people. Can you see the boldness? In the presence of Jesus Christ, there is a loving boldness. With the fear, with the reverential fear, you will still have boldness to have a talk with him. Do you understand? This new and living way. Whereas other pagan religions do not offer this for your information. Okay? Do this, buy this, this many kilos, yeah? and then the Pusari will, will do everything. That's the end of the puja. But here it's not like that. You have boldness. Do you understand? And no veil stands now between you and God. Is there any veil in your heart? Is there any veil that is that is blocking the visibility of God in your life, my dear brothers and sisters? The veil has been torn. The veil has been already torn on the, on the day when Jesus died for you and for me. And the Pharisees, Sadducees, the chief priests were stunned, were, were shocked by what happened in the temple because that veil is a very thick veil. It cannot be torn. Okay? Even with the sharpest knife, you cannot go and tear it like that. There are specifications of how it is being woven. You understand? Okay? So God has torn the veil already. Okay? So I want you to understand the tabernacle because that, that was a direct connection between the cross of Calvary and the tabernacle way and the temple way, right? So there was something being dealt in the cross that had a direct impact within the cross of, within the tabernacle structure. So you should understand. So are we going to have a theological discussion? No. I'm re really going to bring a very important thing that is going to happen within you. Something is going to happen within you. Okay? Now if you go to the next slide, I can show you. So this is the Old, Tem the Old Testament temple structure. Tabernacle structure or the temple structure. So can you hear, see the gate in the right side? The gate. And then comes the altar of burnt offering. So now I am a Jew. Imagine that I am a Jew. I am entering to the gate. I am traveling from some other city, from the town from Galilee. Okay? With my family, I'm coming. I'm entering into the gate. Okay, I'm bringing, I'm dragging a goat along, or a bull alongside me. Okay, so first thing I will do is go to the burnt offering area and burn that offering. First, give the offering. Huh? In our services, we collect the offering at the last. But how do Jews worship the Lord God? First offering. First pay for your sins. Do you understand? That is how it was. Okay, and then comes the labor. So that's a bowl of water where they wash their feet and, the, and cleanse themselves. And then they enter into the holy place. So the outer court 
is where, so what is a washing? It is equivalent to a baptism of these days. Have you been baptized, my dear brothers and sisters? Have you been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? If not, you have to commit yourself to such a baptism. Where you go into the waters and come out as a new creation. That is the moment you are making a divine covenant with God. It's a supernatural activity as well. It is humanly driven. It seems to be like a human activity. But there is a spiritual direct interaction with the heavenlies. Okay, so that is the water, the lava. Do you understand? The Old Testament and the New Testament I am comparing. Okay, now they enter, once you are washed, okay, taking baptism, I become a Christian brother, that's all good. Oh, oh, one or two weeks they will go to the church and then they will forget about the church. No. So, which means, if you do such a thing, you are still in the outer court. You have not even entered the temple. You are just in the outer court. All this offering, all this baptism activities are done for you to enter into the holy place. That is where you have become serious with God. So post baptism, you have to be a serious worshipper of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I am trying to say. Okay. So in the holy place you can see a lampstand, table of showbread. That's where you like a equal to communion. We take the bread and the wine. Okay. And then altar of incense, there's incense, there's fragrance coming. Okay, there is there's high priestly activity in the outer court where burnt offerings are done, where the Levites enjoy the burnt offerings. You understand? It is going for the Levite tribe. Okay, one of the 12 tribes were dedicated and separated out for God's service alone. They cannot own a farmland. They cannot own a house. They cannot have a land. When the land was divided, it would, no part of the land was given to the Levite tribe because they are complete servants dedicated for God. They have to be fed by the other tribes. That is why offerings were collected. That is why tithing is collected. Was collected in the Old Testament. Do you understand? Okay? Now, so there is high priestly service in the holy place where the incense is there and all this. They will be reading the word of God. They will be doing all cleansing activities and the blood of the sacrificed animal will be taken once in a year by the high priest alone uh, to the holy, most holy place. That is the holy of holies. Can you see there is a, it is separated by a screen, a veil. So now the Hebrew, writer of the Hebrew, do you, do you understand chapter 10 verse 20 says, for he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. So the writer of Hebrew says, the veil is the flesh of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ, which was sacrificed for you and for me. And when he sacrificed, it was torn open and you enter into the most holy. Because he was the carrier of God's glory on earth. Jesus contained the glory of God in him. The full glory of God was rested up, resting upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when his flesh was torn open, cut open in the cross of Calvary for you and for me, there was a burst of glory. Hallelujah. You enter into the presence of God. Hallelujah. So, only once in a year the chief priest gets a chance to enter into the Holy of Holies. But you and I are called to live in that Holy of Holies. You have to breathe in the Holy of Holies all through your day. So, how can that happen? Are we living such a life, my dear brothers and sisters? Be honest with yourself. Are we living such a life where we are really living without other distractions hmm? even the holy place is a is an activity place but when it when you come to the holy of holies less activity more of god okay many churches are more activity less of god we are slowly moving from the holy place to the most holy place where you where you and god alone are there talking to each other dealing with the blood Dealing with the sins. Do you understand? You are called for that. Don't think of ordained pastor cannot do this. No. You are called 
for such a service and god the father is expecting such worshipers i didn't say this jesus said this is an expectation not from me from the father god himself my dear brothers and sisters so we in this new covenant how is this translated now this this is the old testament now we have a high pastor high chief priest whose name is jesus christ do you understand so he is functioning in the heavenly realm okay the church is in the earth he has entered into the most holy place he is serving the lord he is interceding when father be merciful hallelujah do you understand he stands in the gap between us and the father my dear brothers and sisters can you move to the next slide there's another diagram now i told you this is not a theological stuff so now how is this getting impacted in related to our life so the the old covenant temple and the new covenant temple like we are dividing it now the outer court is our body okay outer court body is nothing but the outer court the activity what is happening sacrifices okay washing huh? so the blood the the baptism and all how does it happen in our body right okay so that is the level at which people most of them stay but we are more into the inner man which consists of soul and spirit so the holy place is the soul that is how they relate okay soul is a bundle of emotions mind emotions okay so that is also good nothing wrong but if you are only an emotional christian you are going wrong you you have, you have to allow the holy spirit to support your mind and emotions to take you inside the holy of holies you cannot remain as an emotional christian epa pathaalu yesu me nalla varunga alugiradhu mattume ungalude velaiya irukku koodathu adhai taandi aaviyana varai kondu neengal edhai seiya pogureengal just thinking about jesus and the sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross of calvary and becoming emotional crying blabbering giving testimony standing sitting is not enough that is soul level christianity that is good but not enough we cannot stay there because god dwells beyond the veil am i right where is god dwelling in the holy of holies where is the father inviting you to holy of all the holies not in the outer court he is not satisfied that his children are playing in the outer court he is not satisfied that the ch- that the children are wa- getting washed by the baptism of uh, ba- baptism that is not enough for him the father god is calling you into a deeper intimate one to one relationship where he is one in one with you you understand that happens only in the holy of holies he is not even happy with the holy place where soul is entertained where the soul is activity active even in the so called spiritual churches what is happening is most of them are soulish people emotional christians doing nothing but getting emotional with god they always depend on god's promises after promises after promises of wealth riches all these things marriage giving in marriage getting out of marriage soulish that's not it that's good getting promises getting it fulfilled all good but that is all soul level god is inviting you and me into a deeper spirit level holy of holies spirit is directly related to holy of holies do you understand what i'm trying to say so you are already a tabernacle am i right you are formed as a tabernacle body soul spirit you are a tabernacle god is considered the holy spirit considers you as a temple how this is how the holy spirit is considering you as the temple not the jerusalem temple not the disputed buildings not the buildings the church buildings which are in court uh, here is god is not interested in those beautiful buildings my dear brothers and sisters he is interested mostly in your spirit soul body Do you understand god where does he dwell in your spirit in your spirit 
Where is the spirit activity? Where is God speaking in your spirit? 